Welcome to today's episode of Financial Fluency. Today I have Erica Supa with me, who is the founder of Fresh Face Skin Care. Hi, Erica. Thanks for joining me. Hi. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So are you on the East Coast, Erica? I am. I'm in Where Delaware. In Delaware. Okay. I went to school outside of Philadelphia. Okay. Okay. A little close. Closer. Than, I'm in Arizona now, so we're very close <laughs> right now. Oh, okay. So when people say, when, when I tell people that I'm from Delaware, uh, and they don't know where that is, I generally say Philadelphia because that's like the closest major city to where I live. So I live in Northern Delaware. Okay. Delaware is really small anyway, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Um, I would love to hear the story of how you started Fresh Face Skin Care. Sure. Uh, it happened about well, the story begins like seven years ago when um, I was a cancer research scientist for many years before I got uh, into skincare. And I was working for a medical products company in 2010. And I've been there for about two and a half years. And one, I went on a scheduled vacation for a week and I came back um, and that morning at nine o'clock and at 9.05, I was escorted out of the building. I was laid off and I did not see it coming whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, they dissolved the department and that's the reason why. It's nothing that I did or anything like that. Uh, so, so I found myself out of work and in the unemployment line, which I never thought would ever happen to me because I have had all these skills and all this experience and here I am without a job. And in Delaware, the scientific community is very, very small. Um, at the time, AstraZeneca was here, and at that time in 2010 was the same time that they got rid of their research and development staff. So you had all of these scientists in the tri-state area, which means Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, PA, looking for employment. And so nothing was available, and unemployment was very high in 2010 as it was. Mm -hmm. So I was finding myself handing out resume after resume without any kind of um, any security. Uh, I did get some, you know, interviews and everything, but I was overqualified for everything I, I tried to get. So one day I was flipping through uh, television channels. I landed on uh, QVC, which is a home shopping type of network. Uh, and they were selling skincare. And the host or the, the rep was talking about the skincare product that was very expensive and said it does X, Y, and Z. And I was like, no way that that can work, right? There's, scientifically, there's no way that could work, like they said. Okay. So I was actually getting kind of angry at the, the explanation. And here they are. I can't, I'm struggling to find work. And this, this big beauty company is making billions of dollars off of products that are deceitful, that don't do what they say they're going to do with, to the public. So I thought, you know what? I could do that. I could make my own products. I just didn't know how. I, and I've worked in the lab for many years. I have that kind of skill. I thought, let me look into that. So I, I did a Google search for skincare. And I found a local school in Delaware that I've lived in Delaware my whole life. I never knew existed. So I enrolled and it was a huge risk for me because my son was on my health care. My health care is running out. You, you have the option of Cobra, but you know, Cobra is so very, very expensive, cost prohibitive. And then I had no money coming in. So now I had to take out another student loan. And I've already been there, done that with the educational piece and paying back my loans that took forever. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I gave it a shot and I enrolled in a night program because they had day and night. And I thought I wanted to keep my days open because I'm still looking for a job and I want to have that opportunity. If that came about that I had that open. So I enrolled in night in the night program and about halfway through the program, it's like a nine month program. Okay. And about halfway through, I did find a job at the university of Pennsylvania as lab manager for a department of pathology. And it was great. So now I found myself driving to and from Philadelphia every day and going to school at night, uh, every night. <laughs> so it was um, very hectic until I finished the program. And I thought if I enrolled in this program, I would get some sort of resource or some sort of connection uh, into finding out how to make skincare products. So they didn't know quite how to do that, even though I wanted to. Uh, so I didn't find that. But what I did find is we got to work on clients mm. when I was 
as part of practical reasons. So when we go out and most people, they get licensed as an esthetician and they go out to a spa or they become their own person, you know, they, they open their own business and, and do skincare, you know how to do that, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to work on clients. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to make skincare, but I actually really enjoyed it. And, and the, the whole thing, my forte became problem solving because my whole job, my whole life has been problem solving, right? In the lab and coming up with hypotheses and doing observations and experimentation. And this is, this was like fun and a challenge for me in a different way, but I was still helping people. Mm -hmm. So what I liked and what I got into is when people would come to me and say, you know, Erica, I've had this spot on my face or I'd question it like, oh, you have this spot over here. How long have you had that? Well, I've had that for about 10 years and I've been to three dermatologists and they can't figure it out. You know, I've done every prescription in the book and it really didn't work. And so I would get client after client with this and they would just live with it. And I've tried all these over the counter products and they didn't work. So I would try to figure out you know, professionally with professional treatments, as well as home care products, what could work if you understand skin biology and you understand cosmetic chemistry, you can figure out the problem and solve the problem. So that's sort of what really started interesting me. Um, And I decided to open my own business in 2012. So I did get licensed in Pennsylvania first and then uh, subsequently in Delaware, but I opened my first location in Delaware and it was a 250 square foot hole in the wall. Basically, it was just like a little office that was set up like a bedroom. And I thought either people are going to be interested in this or not. I had zero clients at the time. So it was a real risk. I was still working full time. And this was sort of like at night and on weekends kind of thing. And I thought if people really wanted this kind of, uh, you know, uh, more customized uh, specific treatments, just that's all I do is facial treatments. If they wanted that, this would already exist somewhere because this didn't exist anywhere that I know of, at least in Delaware, maybe not even in Pennsylvania. It's more facials were um, hooked on to larger spas Mm -hmm. where they had everything. It's great. You have everything under one roof. You get hair, you get nails, you get massage and what have you. But as a facial customer myself, I would go get facials at spas. That's all we had. And they would be the same thing for everybody. Mm -hmm. The, The person, the esthetician would leave the room or they would use the same products on everybody. And at the end of the treatment, you come out, you're nice and relaxed, and then you have to smell nail polish, and then you have to hear hair dryers. And then you have 20 receptionists that look at you weird, and here's 10 products we used on you today. What do you want to buy? Mm-hmm. And I am totally anti that. And that's really what dr- drove my business. The problem, the, the issue of people going to a medical doctor for topical cosmetics, uh, able to be solved issues and handed prescription after prescription, or you have med spas that are very invasive. So I fall right in between that where I get clinical results without being invasive. So it's all cosmetically based using the natural processes of the skin because it's going to work because skin is skin, right? Skin biology, skin biology. So I started in 2012, five years ago, I opened a 250 square foot space with zero clients. And I now have two locations. I have over 700 clients. I see every one of them myself. And I have my own skincare line and uh, cosmetic line. I started along the way. So obviously people needed this. People wanted this. And they trust me. And I'm very honest with them, um, very upfront with them when they come in. And I just want to help everybody have their best skin ever. And it's not about vanity. It's really about the health of the skin. I really educate. um, I do seminars across the country about different things uh, because I'm a cancer, former cancer researcher. Um, Skin cancer is huge. I talk about that and the importance of SPF a lot and um, that, that can't be said enough. And so here I am, you know, five years later with, uh, you know, my own skincare line. And it's, it's so hard to, the industry is so saturated with 
brands and products and so many people are confused about what's going to work or they don't it's it's and that's another challenge that i have is that people come in and they say well i've tried everything i really don't i don't think your stuff is going to be any different so mm -hmm. when i win those people over uh that's that's really it makes me happy okay i have a bunch of questions <laughs> So, you could interrupt me anytime. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. That's okay. It, it's a great story just to get through. Mm -hmm. One of the things I wondered early on when you mentioned your, your son and healthcare, um, do you have a, a supporting spouse as well? I do, but he works at an independent, sort of a small business that it didn't really financially make sense to add me and my son on his healthcare insurance because it would've, he would have taken no paycheck. Mm -hmm. basically. Okay. So I was really stuck with uh, getting my own. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And when you first mentioned the cancer research prior to, I watched my father go through two different bouts of melanoma. We live in Arizona. He's a pilot. Um, it was on his nose and his ears. The pl you know, he's al always worn long sleeves and high necks and everything, but his ears and his nose got Especially. it. So then he started wearing big cowboy hats, but, um, but I couldn't help thinking cancer research skin and skin cancer being such a massive problem, especially in the Southwest of the United States, mm -hmm. um, but the United States overall, do, do you address any of that particularly? Or if someone comes to you and they have something that you can tell is likely skin cancer, do you send them elsewhere or do you deal with skin cancer? Yes, as an esthetician, uh, legally, and our license does not allow us to diagnose okay. uh, skin diseases or conditions, we can only make our best guess, and it's our responsibility to point things out that they may not see. Okay. Uh, for instance, I had a client one time that had something on her nose, like right where her glasses were sitting, so she never really saw it because she wore glasses all the time oh, every yeah. day. And I said, you might want to get this checked out. I don't want to freak anyone out. You know, you're looking at your, with your magnifying lens over their face. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't like that to begin with. And then you start picking around and you, you see something and you question it, then you don't want to scare them at the same time. But I, I say that, you know, if you catch it now, the better, you know, you can mm -hmm. prevent it. So it ended up being where she had to have it removed and ended up being cancerous. So she was really thankful because otherwise she would have never saw it. So I kind of do that um, and be sort of, and tell my clients to be proactive about it. But I do, that's part of my job is to look out for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's, even if it does scare a little, I think it's better to save someone's life. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Yeah, then, melanoma then, um, can spread really, really fast. Yeah, yeah, that's so important. Um, about the two locations and you seeing everybody. Yes. Can you train someone else to do what you do? I mean, so are you driving back and forth between the two locations because the locations are convenient for your clients? Or that's why do you right. have two locations that's, and it's only you? That, that's how, so I get to ask that a lot. So they're like, why, you know, why do you have two locations? Because it'd be so much easier to manage one. Right. And, the answer is I have two locations because I can see more people. It, okay. it allows this broader kind of reach. Um, it's funny, this area of the country, and it might just be Delaware by uh, alone, I don't know, but people really don't want to drive more than 15 minutes uh, to get to a location. So when I opened my business five years ago, I started seeing clients that kind of worked up north, you know, in, into Philadelphia and uh, North Wilmington. And they had coworkers that would ask them about their skin and like, what are you doing? Uh, and they said, I see this, this uh, woman in Newcastle. Oh, Newcastle's too far. You know, I, I can't drive. So I did a little experiment a year after um, I opened my business and I opened a very similarly small 250 square foot space positioned, you know, 20 minutes between each other in North Wilmington to kind of see what would happen. And really people are hyper local. They kind of mm -hmm. stay for the most part, they, the clients that come to my um, Chaz Ford, Pennsylvania location are in and around Chaz Ford, like Westchester PA and Kennedy Square PA. And they're not necessarily going to go drive down into Newcastle, Delaware, because it's sort of out of the way. It doesn't, it's really kind of um, off the chart. So mm -hmm. and and same thing with uh, Newcastle, Delaware. I can pull from Dover, Delaware. I have clients that come, and they do drive some of them from Dover to, to Newcastle is maybe an hour away. So I do have um, 
the clients that do dry because they don't have anything like me close to them. And mm -hmm. I ask them that all the time, like, why, why do you drive? And they say, well, there's nothing like you down here. So, so that, and most people find me from referral word of mouth. And when I fix a problem, then people, you know, are willing to tell their friends and family. And that's kind of how I grew. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes a lot of sense, especially for facial treatments. I mean, people will yes. notice if you've always had some problem and then it goes Absolutely. away. And all of a sudden it's gone, right? <laughs> that, that's pretty amazing. Um, so you have the two locations and then you also have the skincare line. Yes. Do you have any employees or is it only you? It's only me. I, uh, when I'm not working in the studios, I make my products. That's basically what I do. You make and mix them yourself? You have a lab? Wow. So I can't help thinking in terms of scaling. At, at some point, do you have a plan to outsource manufacturing and train people in what you do so that you can broaden? Or are you planning on keeping it? There's, there's two options. And, and, it, and it's, it's going to play out based on what happens. So part of the part of my story of starting, uh, when I when I told you that how I got started, I, I was looking at a home shopping channel. And mm -hmm. um, last year, I entered a contest on the home shopping network, which is HSN. Mm -hmm. uh, for my pure, for my purifying bar, which is something that I make by hand, and they loved it. They loved the packaging. They loved me. They loved what it does. What it does, and they said that that I will be on television selling it this year in 2017. So mm -hmm. seven years ago, when I was like so worried and uh, to kind of depressed of not having a job, and I said I could do that. I could make my own stuff and sell it on television. I'm going to be able to do that this year. So I've come full circle. Now, once I go on television, now we're talking scaling. We're talking um, hundreds to thousands of pieces of product being sold in a matter of minutes. And I, I can outsource manufacture. Um, that's, a, that's an option where I just send all of my raw materials and my packaging, and then they do it for me and bottle it and send it back. Or the other option I have is to open up a manufacturing facility of my own in the state of Delaware and have people make it right there and then have like a distribution center on. So either one of those um, options I'm willing to consider based on what's the most favorable. Hmm. That is interesting. I have to admit when you're saying open a manufacturing facility in Delaware and employ local people, mm -hmm. that does sound so attractive in so many ways. Mm hmm no, outsourcing sounds so simple, <laughs> like just fulfillment, just, I mean, yes. what do other small skincare companies do? Have you researched, like, I mean, I don't, I don't know how small Rodan, I'm thinking of like ones I've seen advertised, like Rodan and Fields, and you know, there are a few others. Do they, do they do fulfillment overseas or, I don't know, would it be made in China? That I'm kind of curious, like how those things work. I've never really explored skincare. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that the products themselves are necessarily manufactured in overseas. I think some of the packaging maybe come from China because it is very um, cost effective to do that. If you're, if you're talking about large volume, if you're mm -hmm. talking about smaller volume, not so much, but mm -hmm. I think for the most part that they have a uh, contract manufacturer, they have a lab that just does everything. But mm -hmm. again, they have a lot of money to spend as well. Mm -hmm. So they, they can just, if you have the money, you can do whatever you want and you can just have somebody else make your stuff. And that's what a lot of these uh, skincare companies do now. There's only X amount of labs in the United States. So a lot of the labs make many, many different types of brands of skincare products. And I believe that's what most of them do. And they, and some of them just do everything for them. So they don't even have to think about it. They do everything from the packaging, to the formulations, to the filling, and then they get shipped to a warehouse and then the warehouse workers will send it out, um, you know, to the customer. Mm -hmm. Interesting. As you're talking through that, I was remembering when I first read uh, Tim Ferriss's four hour work week book. Have you ever read that? No. Um, he has a part, he ends up doing like some kind of drink, like brain enhancing drink that sounds honestly a little on the shady side to me. It doesn't, he's no scientist. He didn't, I don't know how much he researched it, but you know, it has some of those like Red Bull type querine or tarine or something like that. Right. It. 
And he does the entire, he never touches it. The entire fulfillment is done elsewhere and all he does is sell it and he sets up this thing and then he, you know, has fulfillment happen. So basically he can step away and never touch it again, Um, which I don't know that that is for everyone for sure. But I was wondering if there's some, some, you know, happy median in there for you to be able to uh, expand without, right now everything's so on you. That's so... That's a lot. That's a lot to do. Both cli- 700 clients. How often does every client come? Do they come once a month? Or? Most come once a month. Um, some of them come every other month. Some of them come once a quarter. Um, mm. And then some, you know, they just come t- once or twice a year. So I have, you know, the gamut of, of people. So it, it kind of works out where I'm not completely inundated. Um, I think for me to scale, would be more of an online type of sales of the of the products because it is just me. I, I really don't have an interest in hiring other estheticians to do mm-hmm. what I do and have a bunch of rooms and that kind of thing. It kind of waters down the experience. I think mm-hmm. most people want to see me anyway um, mm-hmm. rather than someone else. And I think w- one way to do that is to have a manufacturing distribution and then mm-hmm. ha- having you know, employ, be able to employ people. And as a woman owned business, a hundred percent, then there's also different grants and different state funding that might be available to me um, that I'm exploring now. So when I get there, I can, you know, take advantage of that kind of stuff. Well, that is amazing. That's amazing that you've done this a hundred percent, just you mm-hmm. and that you're seeing all the clients. And I can't help thinking as soon as you do go on TV and start selling this, those slots in your clinics will become very, very sought after. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You'll probably have to raise your prices. (laughs) Yeah. My clients are scared. They're like, uh, so when you make it big, you know, we still want to come to you. (laughs) So I'd, I'd rather have people help me make products rather than help me work on clients. Yeah. If that makes sense. That does make sense. So your initial feeling that you didn't want to work on clients, that's totally changed. That's totally changed. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it if I, you know, if I couldn't stand it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that probably gave you all the experience to try out, you know, to see all the different um, kind of gamut of problems that people have that you need to solve. Cause For you sure. think about someone back in an R and D lab, they aren't necessarily interacting every day with people who have skin problems. And that, that's a, another separation that separates me from the average skincare line is the people that create the lines don't have hands-on day-to-day experience with skin. Mm-hmm. And when you see that, and when you have the, all the different variables, humans are very, have met much variability in and of itself. So you have to take it that into account and everybody's um it's not it goes beyond skin type Mm -hmm. it goes beyond skin tone so you have to know it really really is helpful for me to have that experience every day and also to hear the feedback to hear Mm -hmm. the feedback from clients that use all the different products that are out there because i don't even know some of them i don't even know when they come in they tell me they use x y and z i've never heard of it before so then that Mm -hmm. helps me investigate what other people are doing uh, what other companies are doing what ingredients are using because it changes all the time and you really have to stay on top of the educational piece uh, when you are dealing with skincare because there's different modalities that come out meaning equipment uh, there's different types of treatments that you could do. There's different types of ingredients or ingredients use a different way to target something. Um, I tried to fill in the gaps for my clients. So when they come in and say, you know, I really want this product, but it doesn't exist. I can't find it anywhere. That kind Mm of, I kind of make a mental note and file it away. And that's how I came out with the purifying bar because something like that didn't exist before um, that gently cleans the face, but also targets issues. And that's why it's been my number one selling product. And that's why HSN's interested in it. So as far as uh, issues, is it like acne or oil or what, what are the issues that it targets? So the issues that um, it targets are many. Um, initially, I had this idea two years ago to make three different skincare bars. So they're like a facial bar, facial cleanser in a bar form. Mm -hmm. And I made them in a bar form. Number one, it's cheaper for the client because you don't have all this extraneous packaging. 
And number two, um, it's easy to use on the body as well because people have problems on their body just as well as their face. And the three I was going to do were acne, psoriasis, and eczema. Oh. And I started with my acne bar because I'm an acne specialist. That's who I see more of adult acne clients. And my sensitive skin acne clients, uh, I had really good professional brands of cleansers that I was using that were for acne prone individuals. The problem mm -hmm. with those cleansers were that they were too drying and they couldn't use it. So whatever they used following didn't work as effectively, like the serums and the moisturizers, et cetera. So they weren't clearing their skin. It was kind of setting them back. So I thought, what could I do um, to kind of uh, avoid that. So I decided to make this bar to be close to that of the skin's pH. That's the secret of it. It's really very gentle because it doesn't disrupt the pH of the skin. So it doesn't strip the skin of its natural oil too much, but it still cleans it without a detergent. But the natural properties are very anti-inflammatory and very antibacterial. So when you think of those properties, antibacterial and anti-inflammatory, what kind of skin conditions does that cover? Well, it covers everything. It covers psoriasis, it covers eczema, it covers mosquito bites, it covers poison ivy, like any kind of rash or something that weird pops up on the face. This kind of has ingredients that, that help alleviate those types of symptoms. So I really didn't need to make a psoriasis bar and an eczema bar, because this is like a magic bar. It just, it just mm. covers all of these conditions all at the same time. And all the feedback I've been getting has been phenomenal. Um, is there any, um, okay, so I have a daughter who has eczema yeah. and we've struggled with the, like as a baby, she would rub her feet against the sheets in her crib until her ankles opened. Like, mm, sort nice. Of, Cause she would scratch so much. She's, now she's seven and it's much better. She just gets breakouts now and then, you know, Arizona winter dry. Sometimes it, we get patches on the backs of the knees, the ankles again, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we have that. And then my daughter also has allergies. So we can't have anything with nuts, like no nut oil. Like I'm always reading all the packages on all the mm -hmm. like shampoos and cleansers and everything. Cause a lot of them will put nut oils and we have nut allergies, wheat allergy and dairy allergy. Mm -hmm. So um, does your bar have, nut, wheat, or dairy in it? It doesn't have any. It has it has buttermilk in it, uh, like a powder. Okay. Um, I don't know if that would, I don't think it would be a problem. I haven't had anyone have any problems, but it doesn't have any nut or wheat. If I guess I'm thinking like with the bath, if it was swallowed at all. That much. But you know what? Maybe I'm curious. I think I'll order a bar and try it out just because. That's yeah, means not, not oral allergies don't always translate to dermal allergy. Yeah. Uh, for well, example, I have clients that have sulfur allergies to medication, but if they have a sulfur ingredient in a product, they're not going to necessarily be reactive to that. Right, right. Um, my, for my daughter, it's a white blood cell disorder called eosinophilic esophagitis, Okay, which is a little odd. Um, she also has autism and does swallow bath water, though. So that's why I'm kind of like, we could do it in the shower, maybe, and not the bath. I, I don't know. How old is she? Um, so the one with eczema is seven. The one okay. with the white blood cell disorder and autism is 10. But, okay. um, but she is significantly delayed. So mm -hmm. um, so that we don't necessarily need to use it on the both of them. I could, you know, we have a lot of things in our house that I keep locked up and separate um, because a few things that my mm -hmm. younger daughter really wants, my older daughter can't have. But um, yeah, I'm thinking we might give it a try because different soaps have made, some make them worse. Some make, you know, some things I don't even think about will we'll travel and she'll try some soap and she'll have a breakout. Um, chlorine seems to be a problem too. When mm -hmm. she swims all summer, her mm -hmm. eczema comes out. Does she take any medications for her no. disorder? No. Oh, for my older daughter, for my older daughter's on a lot of medications, but she's not the one with the skin problem. My younger daughter doesn't take any medications. Oh, okay. Okay. No. Okay. I, see, this is the perfect uh, concept is that the bar is only $10. So it's a low mm. risk. Yeah. We could uh, try it out. So you can try it out. And if it doesn't work, you're not out $80. You're, you only lost $10 out of it. So this is why people a lot of times give it a try, even though they're very skeptical. So mm -hmm. I would say 
you totally can use it. You use the lather on the areas of concern. So you're not gonna use the bar directly on, I mean, you could use it on the body, but for this case, I would say just use the lather and just leave the lather on for like a minute before you rinse and let the okay. ingredients start to work. Okay, cool, well, that's exciting. And actually yeah. just hearing you talk about the pH of the skin and these different things, I had never, I never considered that with, with skin products like of course mm -hmm. that makes sense I mean hopefully other people designing skin things think about that some but you having that scientific background and being like okay what will take care of bacterial infections and inflammation and pH mm -hmm. it's like oh of course right that makes There's sense. a lot of things <laughs> that yeah. go into it yeah well I'm really excited to check your stuff out myself because I have to admit I have spent a lot on both my daughter's skin and my own skin over the years just I stay out of the sun I try you know I've had some really bad sunburns in my life so I'm always kind of like oh I could be one of those people where it could pop up I've had lots yeah. of little things removed just because you know just in case I had a big mole here and right you know, my esthetician is definitely my friend <laughs> um, you know and as we get I don't know how old you are I'm 41 how old are you 42 your skin looks beautiful. It, it's amazing. So um, yeah, as we get older, I think we pay much more attention to it because mm -hmm. when we were younger, it was just there unless we had, you know, acne or problems, which I did too. When I was teenaged, I had really, really bad acne on my cheeks, um, okay. which I'm glad I did not scar that much, but yeah. yeah, I mean, we all, I think the memory of that sticks with us all. I also mm -hmm. have, can I ask you a personal question here about my sure. own thing? I have a collapsed pore under one ear that bugs the heck out of me. Is that something that can ever be repaired in some way? I don't think so. Oh, that's what my esthetician said too. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's just sort of a, a hole <laughs> in the side yeah, of my neck. Yeah, kind of open. And but then, you're lucky it's back there and not like here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It's just, I, you know, it, I kind of cover it because it looks a little odd and it can collect things. That, <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, she, she tends to that for me. <laughs> I'm getting very vulnerable on this episode with my own skin issues. But, um, but yeah, you know, I think this is something a lot of us deal with hidden. We don't talk, like, I don't openly talk about my skin issues to just anybody, but we, a lot of us have them and we go see someone for them. And if it can't fix it, we just live with it because we don't know that there are any other options. So exactly. Yeah. Or you get differing opinions, right? If you go to one place someone might tell you one thing because they think they know what you're talking about and they not necessarily do. And then they go to another place and then they're like, wait a minute, they told me the complete opposite. So it confuses a lot of people sometimes as I hear that feedback a lot too. Mm -hmm. So if people do need something minor removed, that's not necessarily cancerous, do you do those minor like, you know, moles or skin tags? I'm just curious. No, I don't do that. So I don't do anything invasive. That's something that um, I would, I would just recommend somebody else for. Okay, that totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, this is exciting. So when is the TV appearance happening? Is it still um, in the works? It's still, so they're testing the product now under their, you know, stringent guidelines and everything, and then they're going to let me know. So uh, I don't know yet, but it's, they said sometime this year. Well, that's exciting. So exciting, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have any other upcoming plans or launches of new products planned right now? I do. I'm work. I'm always working on new ideas and new things. The problem with it all is I test everything on myself. So, um, and as well as other clients too, depending on, you know, what I'm trying to target. Um, but I'm a good tester because I'm cystic acne prone. So if I have a, if I have a product that doesn't agree with me, I pretty much start breaking out and cyst the next day. I mean, I'll have big, like large, welts on my face pretty quickly. So I'm a good tester for a lot of things. And, um, that sounds so unpleasant though, <laughs> yeah. but I know how to, to remedy that remedy. Yeah. It. <laughs> so if I have something like that, I can treat it fairly quickly. Uh, so well, I'm going, go ahead. you're a great advertisement for your own product then like knowing that I would never have guessed that looking at your skin through the camera here. Um, mm -hmm. it looks very, for anyone listening and not watching your skin is just, it's kind of luminous. It's very pearly and clear and lovely. So Thank if, you. if you're listening and not watching, you should click over to YouTube to check it out because obviously we're talking about our skin. You might want to see it. So. Okay. So you have that coming. You're doing new products. I'm doing new products. So the, um, in the short term, I'm working on um, like a, a soothing type of spray uh, for the face and body. So if you 
um, that have sunburn or if you are dehydrated, like this would be great for you, like in Arizona where you guys are a lot, the humidity is low, you can yeah. spray throughout the day and, and it sort of like refreshes your makeup. You can use it as a makeup setting spray. So I'm working on so I'm working on something like that. I'm working on a hydrating toner because I do have a toner now that's more of an exfoliating toner. So I wanted to give the options of the hydrating for the rest of my clients that need that. And um, oh, and, and another thing is anti-aging type of pads. Like people like quick and easy. So I make these cl like cleansing pads that are good for when you go to the gym and for when teens are working out and they have breakouts and they need to wipe their face down without necessarily lugging products and having to do a, um, a, re a full regimen they can wipe off and then they clean off the dirt and oil. So mm -hmm. I'm working on something uh, that's in the same type of pad that has exfoliating type of properties to help with aging and marks that are left behind with the acne and um, mm -hmm. sunspots and things that a lot of people are concerned about. Mm, so you can work on, okay, I'll admit I've had an IPL, or, you know, the, the light pulse thing on the backs of my hands because yeah. of these. And again, I normally, can you see them? Yes. Aging spots through the, um, can you work on those without using like laser treatment? You have products that works mm -hmm. on them? Wow. I want to try that because like, again, I'm someone who I am kind of an early adopter with a number of things I have done peels, which I hate because then you have to be out of sight for a couple of days. I've mm -hmm. tried the needling. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of, my estheticians, I'm like probably one of her test people because I'm willing. I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. Let's give it a try. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of them I don't like the fallout, you know, the like several days of like swollenness or puffiness or the peeling. Mm -hmm. My daughter freaked out when I tried to peel and, you know, my skin's coming off and she was like, <gasps> really frightened it kind of frightened me too but um but oh. they do bother me but the the IPL did not seem to do all that much to be honest I mean it did at first but I don't know I would love to try something that would get rid of those yeah and that's a hard area to treat because you're always washing your hands throughout the day and even yeah. to wear to put sunscreen on it's it's hard to keep it on right so, yeah. and then in the, I drive a lot and in the car I don't wear it's, I can't wear gloves in the summer in Arizona. It's just too hot. Yeah. Um, in the winter, I wear gloves. But yeah, so the, they're exposed to the sun through this. I always think that's what does the spots is my driving. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Tough spot. It's very so. true because the UV radiation, the UVA that's coming through your uh, driver's side window is where you're getting it. Your, your, your windshield's protected from UV radiation. Oh, but it's the driver's side, which is a lot of times people will be more aged appearance on the left side of their face because they have all the light coming in when they're driving. You know what, maybe you could convince car manufacturing companies to put a UV screened uh, mm -hmm. window on there. That'd mm -hmm. be a good campaign to run somehow. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to do that, but yeah, if it would save people from aging and skin cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Huh. Well, I love it that you continue to find these problems and try to solve them because yeah. There are so many. <laughs> There's so many, many right? Yeah. Like, I, I find them all the time. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many. Well, cool. I can't wait to, um, I'm going to go and check out definitely the purifying bar to try for my daughter and see how yeah. that works. And then what, what's the product that helps with the age spots? Do you have one right now or is that coming up? Yeah, well, that's the one thing that I was working on coming out with. I have a serum that would work, uh, but it's Kind of, it's, it's kind of pricey to be using on the back of your hands, maybe. Um, oh, is it more for face? Like, it's more for face, like maybe. My husband uh, gets them here on the sides of his, I think it's the way his sunglasses are. Hmm. He gets, he's, has a bunch on the sides of his eyes. Like sunspots? Like yeah. dark spots? Yeah. yeah. He might have reflection from the lens or. Oh. I even does he wear sunscreen? He's not very good at it. He's British and. The Brits are funny about sun. I think it's because they don't get that much in England. <laughs> Could be. Yeah. I mean, but I think men in general are kind of funny with, with sunscreen. True. I guess we're used to moisturizers and cleansers and stuff, and it yeah. doesn't occur to him as much. I, <laughs> yeah. He would love so, the bar. Does he shave? He does. So he would love the bar, too. It makes a great shaving bar. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Does it have any SPF in it? It does not. 
Do you have lotion with SPF that would? We do. Okay, because he does, he gets dry too. We all get dry here. I mean, Arizona's yeah. like 0% humidity most of the time. So it's basically all day long, the air sucks the moisture out of your skin. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's why I, I do this. Like this is a pickle jar. It looks a little funny, but I always have a pickle jar full of water to mm -hmm. remind me that I need to drink. I need try to get at least three of these a day. Yeah. 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 You guys need it. Totally. I remember I did a talk out um, in the, in the West coast in the desert area uh, Palm Desert area a couple years ago, and I had people coming up to other estheticians coming up to me after the talk to say how they how they liked it, and they were wanting to meeting to meet me and everything. And they one of them touched my arm, and with her hand, and they're like, "Oh my God, feel her arm!" It's and I said, "It's the humidity." <laughs> you know, we we're really humid on the East Coast, and you guys are not, and mm -hmm. uh, the lack of humidity can be a real problem. So you really yeah. have to protect your skin as much as possible um, there. Yeah. Yeah. In March, my family went to Ireland. And when we landed, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like my skin is drinking from the air yeah. right now. I can't even, even, I did put moisturizer on this morning, but I can already see on my arm, mm -hmm. um, I can see the dryness, you know, yeah. and I do this. I make my kids do this because I'm like, okay, make sure you don't get dehydrated because Especially with such small body masses, they can get yeah. so much fat playing soccer, running around, you know. Yeah. That's a good visual. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking to us about oh, this. Oh, I am, thank you. I'm really excited to find you myself. I think um, the scientific approach to the actual like pH and chemical balance of the skin is so fascinating and important. It's uh, so important. That's like everything. <laughs> So I'm going to put in the show notes a link to your purifying bar because it's just $10. Okay. We can all try. Who couldn't use some antibacteria and anti-inflammation and cleansing and acne and, you know. Yeah, even if you it? don't have any problems. I have people ask me all the time, would this be good for me even though I don't have acne? And I said, it totally would. And you know what? Everyone who's bought it comes back and buys multiples. So you know it has to be good. I have men coming in my store okay buying three bars at a time like how did i knew i had something that was hot on my hands because why would a guy come in here you know just off the street and just buying the bars huh maybe it's the shave thing i'll have my it husband test shaving. it for shaving exactly too. And, and men love one product that does everything my husband has psoriasis in the back of his head right mm. here so he was a great tester for um, the psoriasis piece because it, it can double as a shampoo so for a, a man they want to use one bar to clean their face shave their face shampoo with and clean their body with right that's why they use like the all-encompassing body wash so this kind of bar mm. really mimics that in a way my my father and my brother both have psoriasis too now that you said that i was like oh you know I'll I'll send them, I'll send them a, a test bar, see what they think. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no harm in that. And you, yeah. I'll be curious to see what they say because they're going to like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because my, my brother actually is scarred from it on his legs, his, his knees. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, over the years. It gets better and worse, but he's not found anything that fully solves it. We were I talking know. about it in May when I yeah, saw him. Yeah. It's, it's, and my husband too, he has used everything um, that the doc, that the dermatologist prescribed him, you know, the medications. And the only thing that worked for him was prednisone, which you cannot be on long term. Yeah. So, and, and who wants to be on um, an immunosuppressive for long term? You open yourself up for risk of so many other things. And mm -hmm. that was the driver behind the, th the concept of the three bars with eczema, psoriasis, and acne is that there's three problems that people have that are very, very common that are currently treated with prescription. So mm -hmm. one of the things I want to try is um, I'm looking for funding, um, researching for funding uh, from the NIH on doing clinical trials with this bar to, to, to position it against um, the current methods of treatment with prescriptions because I know this is going to be, be a better outcome. Yeah. Well, I know even with my daughter, like the over-the-counter cortisone creams were not enough. So we got like extra strength, <laughs> huge amounts of steroids that we were putting on her. And it was, it was mess. It like, that was messing up her skin too. It was like making it, I, they said it could thin it, but which I, I don't know that I could see it thinning, but I could see like, cause we would rub it further around than the eczema was. And I could see the whole area was changing. Like it. Oh yeah. See yeah. that? And it's like, it caused another problem. 
Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. who wants to do, it's like a vicious cycle. Yeah. Wow. And actually, as I'm going through, I thought, oh yeah, I have a friend, Melanie from school who, when I was dealing with Lou's egg, or with Miffy's eczema, she had a son with eczema too. I wonder if her son still has eczema. I haven't talked to her in a while, but yeah. So I have lots of people I could suggest this bar to, but I'm going to get my own and try it out on my family first. You, somebody has to be the guinea pig. Yeah. So yeah. you have to be the guinea pig and then your family, and then everyone's going to want it after you say it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we'll put the link in the show notes for everyone listening to so you guys can okay, try it wonderful. Through. If you have any skincare problems or just want to try it out, do. And then we'll all, we'll all tell you what we think, okay? So everyone, okay. try it out and then go tell, tell Erica how it works for you guys and your family. Yes. I love the feedback, so please. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It was a joy to talk to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I will be ordering from you soon. <laughs> okay. I'll look for the order. Bye. <laughs>